What's up everybody, it's your boy Sir Splash, and today's video is in direct response to a video I just did recently. So, uh, myself and a few others did a Splash Roundtable, if you haven't checked it out, go see it. It's the Punisher vs. Batman, who is a better character overall. And throughout that video, at one point, my buddy Skinny says, Punisher doesn't have any good stories or memorable stories. I lost my mind. and. You know, while that was a terrible moment for mankind for Skinny to say such a thing, um, it is a good moment to start off my Splash lore series where I, you know, I do a lot of power scaling, do a lot of versus battles. I also want to add lore videos. And so I'm going to be covering Punisher Max uh, as well as I'll be covering the boys soon. Um, I just finished volume one of that. But um, for part one of Punisher Max, as well as to prove Punisher has some of the best stories in comics, um, we will be going over Garth Ennis's run first. Ennis is considered the god of Punisher and Punisher Max. Even by someone like uh, Jason Aaron, who is one of the best writers out right now. Um, so we're going to be going over Punisher Max Born. It's basically the Punisher Max origin story. So I hope you guys enjoy uh, my coverage of the story. So. The story starts off with us in Vietnam. Um, we are being told this story through the eyes of a young man. Uh, this young man is a soldier in Frank Castle's platoon. Um, he's basically, uh, if you don't really know much about Vietnam, a lot of people that were there didn't want to be there. They were drafted. Um, this young man was also drafted and uh, he, he does not want to be there. He's trying to go home, you know, live his best life. He doesn't want to be in this war zone, in this hellhole. Frank Castle, as he uh, notes, is a hard man and scares the shit out of him. Um, it's not that like Frank is a bad person, it's just Frank goes hard in the paint and it really uh, makes the young man who is a pacifist by nature uh, feel really you know, worried in his presence, nervous. Um, anyways, we learn through the visit of like a colonel that the war is ending soon. Everyone knows this, Frank, doesn't seem to care about that. In fact, there is a voice inside of Frank's head telling him that he needs to stay, that he needs to kill all the enemies and let loose, and that that guy can help him, you know, kill all the enemies and let loose. Frank denies the voice, um, doesn't react to it, doesn't, um, he doesn't give in to it in any manner. And simply put, Frank is like, okay, we can't, at this point, Frank has never lost a man in battle. That is the one thing he's known for. For as bad as Vietnam was, and especially in the comics, and as bad as the war was, he had managed to keep all of his men alive throughout all of his numerous raids and successful missions. So with this in mind, he's like, yo, even if the diplomats are ending this war, which he doesn't really believe because of how vicious it is, he doesn't believe something so vicious could just stop. He's like, we have to constantly be vigilant until the very end or else they could cap us. Like he's, this is not a normal war and Frank understands that more than anyone else. This is a war of you hit them when you can and you hit them when you have the best chance to. So anytime they drop their guard, they could get got. So he's like, yo, the war's not over yet. We're still here. We gotta treat it like it's never gonna end. Um, so we kind of, you know, get further into the story. We see the unit more, but specifically we do focus in on the young man and his best friend in the unit, a young black soldier. Now, um, back then, obviously, you know, 60s, 70s, even, you know, this civil rights movement. So it's kind of a weird bond they have, or it's seen by outsiders as weird, but they get along just fine. They don't really care about the racial stuff. They joke about it. Like they're, they're just good friends, but, um, the black, the black guy is addicted to, um, I think it's opioids. Um, he's addicted to something. Um, but anyways, yeah, he has a drug addiction and the young man's trying to keep him off it because, you know, he doesn't want his head to turn to fucking jelly um, from all the drugs. So, you know, he's helping him wean off of it, help him stay off of it. Um, anyways, so Frank, like I said, is warning of a looming raid and the voice in his head tells him, yo, be proactive. You should just go out there and kill shit. Like, don't wait for them to come to you. Like, let me help you go out there and end this war. You know, the war never ends, Frank. But again, he denies the voice, doesn't really entertain it, um, anything of that nature. And so we see 
you got to remember up to this point, the never lost factor. We see on a routine raid, a, per, a guy in Frank's platoon gets popped. It it's, turns out to be the uh, best friend to the young man. It's hit in the neck. Um, he does die. And um, this really serves as a harrowing point for the young man, especially since we're seeing it from his view, breaks his heart, um, really takes a lot of his willpower out of him. Frank, when this happens, when they're getting jumped by the Kong snipers, grabs an M60 and goes ballistic, kills all of them. He even gets hit himself, it doesn't matter. Kills all the Kong that jumped him. You know, gets, he avenges his fallen teammate. But this is an important moment for Frank because he lost someone. He has not taken a loss. So now he's pissed off. He's like, you know, in his mind, he's telling the people that come through like that uh, annoying Colonel that, hey, you're not in the trenches with us. We need help. We need more gear. I don't give a shit if the war ends tomorrow. We need gear no matter what. Like, we need more. You can't just leave us here. You can't leave us at this output out, outpost. Frank had held down that post for a while, but he also hadn't really gone anywhere. So the Kong were still constantly around them, um, which is important to note later, especially on a ridge. There's a ridge they really can't go past. If you ever seen Hacksaw Ridge, it's kind of like that. There's a point where they can't, they just can't cross it because the Kong roll too deep and they're constantly there waiting for them, wishing they would. Um, so after this, you know, the unit is kind of shook. The unit is a little crazier now. The best friend's lost. Um, the young man, you know, he's devastated. Well, anyways, they go about raids. Um, they kill a bunch of Kong, right? This is where we get the village girl incident. Um, basically, when they destroyed like a group there by this watering hole, and um, they caught a Viet Cong girl. She was just like a girl from their camp. And the soldiers in the platoon started raping her. Now, um, this is when we see the young man try to step in and stop them. He's like, dude, like, that's not what we do. And he gets the shit kicked out of him. They call him like a pussy for trying to break it up. But um, they, they do rape her. And we see later on this is this is crazy this is an important moment in the story we see later on the um young man is like he's in hiding he's he's fucked up he got the shit kicked out of him um that young girl's there um and frank shows up uh the young man's hiding he he, he can see frank he doesn't see frank. he doesn't think frank sees him but the guy that led the rape um the like gang rape he's down by the water getting water frank walks up behind him and um he puts his head on the back he puts his foot on the back of that guy's head and drowns him and the young man you know in the bush is like what the fuck like that's he's drowning his own soldier and he he kills him frank kills him then he turns around and he puts a bullet in the head of the village girl which just does further to tra uh traumatize um the young man he's like dude I, <laughs> I don't know who frank plays for chief i don't know whose side he's on because he's he, the faith for everyone apparently um but this is this is um kind of important it's a really cool moment in the story you know this is very dark this is the dark part of the story but it's also followed by a very cool character building moment where the young man is sitting around later frank approaches him talks to him hey first time he's really ever talked to him he's like i know you're there young man was like what he's like yeah i know i know you saw what i did and he was like you know let me tell you son i it basically i don't care what team you're repping i don't care what uniform you're in i don't care what side you're on there's certain lines we don't cross no matter how bloody it gets out here no matter how vicious and violent it gets out here we don't do things like rape an innocent girl that's not what we do and he was like that guy had to go i had to kill him I could not let I could not let someone be in my group getting away with something like that and you know something as vicious and heinous as that makes my soldier Frank obviously referring to the guy he killed just as bad as the guys we demonize which is a very cool moment and it's very true um, and it shows that Frank has lines he will not cross he has you know he'll kill he'll mutilate he'll torture he'll beat the shit out of you but stuff like rape um, you know, stuff like killing kids. No, Frank never would do that. And so he tells the young man, you got a family? And the young man's like, yeah, I have a kid on the way. I have a, a wife at home. 
And Frank's like, I got two at home. I got my wife. I love them, you know. And he said he tells the young man, he says, look, I'm I'm gonna get you home, kid. I'm gonna get you back to your family. You just you put that weight, you put that burden on me. You don't have to worry. I'll get you there. And that really lifts a weight off the kid's shoulders because he's like, he sees this guy who he's not bad, especially now he knows. Also, he addressed shooting the girl in the head. He said that girl was traumatized and she was beaten half to death and she was never gonna recover. And he said, I ended her misery. And it turns out like I guess essentially the girl wanted to die um, and Frank obliged her. He was like, you know, I, I wasn't going to let her walk around, you know, covered in scars because they did beat the shit out of her, um, traumatized from getting gang raped. And you never know how the village is going to react to her either. They might shame her or something. And he said, you know, she needed to be free and I let her be free. Um, so it wasn't Frank being vindictive, like because she's a part of the Kong or anything like that. He saw a girl that was would never recover from a beating and from a rape and he, he put her out of her misery um you know it's dark and very debatable on if that's still morally right but at least in frank's view and the young man understands it too he was helping the girl it's like a um, forgot what the word is basically a peaceful euthanasia consensual euthanasia because she kind of wanted to die anyways we um we find out the war is definitely coming to a close soon the colonel comes back Frank does not fuck with the colonel. Um, he's just a fat guy behind the desk that tells them what to do. He's not down there grinding. The colonel tells him, yo, I'm not giving y'all shit. You just hold out till we get you out of here. You'll leave soon. Frank's like, dude, we, we still need supplies. Like, we still need supplies. We still need men. We need to be on guard. We need to be ready at all times. Colonel's like, no, you're full of shit, dude. The war's ending. No one cares anymore. Frank's like, dude, let me show you the ridge. Ridge is crazy. And at this point, the voice is in his head telling Frank, like, dude, snap his neck. Like, he's a piece of shit. Let me free, and we can snap his neck, kill him, move on. He's inept. He's ungrateful. Frank doesn't do that. But Frank, what Frank does tell, and he's like, do you believe the war's ending? The colonel's like, yeah. And he's like, well, check, beat the ridge, homie. And then, remember, I told you this is one of those ridges where they wish you would. He tells the colonel, he's like, yo, go check it out. It's just up there. See what's going on. And colonel's like, what? And he, like, walks up the ridge. He's like, dude, what the hell are you talking? Boom. Head gets blown off. GG. Colonel's dead. And he, <laughs> Punisher didn't kill him. But Punisher did tell him, yo, the war's not over. Go to that ridge. And um, he got he got his head blown off for his troubles. So, But you got to remember, Frank didn't kill him himself, which he usually does when he's punishing. Um, Frank didn't give in to the voice. Um, so the night before they leave, you know, there's um, they don't have that much supplies like I've talked about. They have... Um, you know, a limited amount of people in their group. The young man's talking about he can't wait to get home, man. He gets to see his wife. He's going to get to raise his kid. He's so excited. Um, and then that's when they hear noises. That's when they hear gunshots. It's when they hear commotions. It, they're getting blitzed by something. And Frank screams, turn on the spotlights. It's the craziest moment in this story. Spotlights are turned on all around the field, around their outpost. Hundreds of Viet Cong soldiers are descending upon their location, ready to kill them all. Everyone in that outpost shits their pants. They're like, fuck that. We're dead. This is fucked. Like, this is the worst possible case scenario because they don't have, they're not getting picked up till the morning. They don't have support till the morning. Frank turns around while everyone is in shock, scared out of their minds. And he says, Ham, hey, someone get me my M60. But he just calls it the 60. But this is the same gun he used when he went ballistic. So he says, get me the 60. Someone gets him a 60. They start fighting back. Frank's on point. Frank's doing the best he can to keep his men alive, keep them in positions to be successful. They're fighting off this, these countless waves of Viet Cong soldiers who don't give a damn. These guys will go and they're willing to die, but they're gonna try to kill you in the process. Um, and they, they, you know, they start fighting goes on throughout the night they're losing supplies fast they start losing men they're drop like they're dropping like flies because the numbers are too big and frank as good as he is even and especially with the m60 amp he can't kill everything he can't kill them all definitely can't 1v you know 400 so so they're basically holding out till dusk and it comes down to frank and the young man who's been telling this whole story um, this one of the saddest moments in the story, but it's also absolutely crazy. So, 
Frank and the young man are holding out. He's desperate to keep this young man alive. He's honestly more worried about, he made this boy a promise to get him home to his family. He's gonna keep that fucking promise even if he dies. So they're fighting, they're down to their last few guns. They're down to knives, they're down to fists. They're down to, you know, he has a garden shovel. Um, it's, it's bad and the guy gets hit young man gets hit i believe it was from fire but i don't remember exactly but he's he's dying and um frank you know frank's trying to help him it's, it's useless and the young man's like dreaming of like going off and being with his family being free being happy young man dies it's very it's very sad and this is when the voice comes back the voice enters frank's head he's like frank this is us, man. You see this young man, this young man died. He didn't have to die, he could have let me free. And he's like, Frank, we couldn't save him. We couldn't save everyone else. But you know what we can do is we can punish the wicked. We can get back at those that did this, that caused this bloodshed. So what do you say, Frank? You gonna let me in? You gonna let me team up with you and destroy them? Or are you gonna let us punish? Frank turns around in the middle of this fight and he's getting swarmed and he says, yes. Then it cuts, you see some flash here and there. Helicopter comes in the morning, American Chopper. Lands, goes to Alpus, everyone's dead. And in the field, surrounded by countless dead Viet Cong and some of his own men, is Frank. Completely covered in blood, covered in injuries, standing there, eyes blood red, with a shovel in his hand. We don't know how many people he killed with just the shovel, just his bare hands, but he became essentially a demon. Now, obviously the story is not supernatural. What I believe Garth Ennis was getting at, um, which is awesome, is that the Punisher has always been inside Frank. It's the side of him that says, dude, fuck the rules, you know, fuck what society says, fuck judgment, fuck what anyone says. We are meant to punish. And that Punisher aspect of Frank finally got through to him and became one with him in that moment where he broke the promise he had made to the young man, which broke his heart. All his men were dead recently. Up to that point, he kept all his men alive um, until that fateful raid. He had had to kill one of his own men. All of this accumulated the war itself into making the Punisher become who he was meant to be, which is the Punisher. So he killed everyone. He killed, I think the number was between three to 400 Viet Cong. Most of them died by the hands of Frank Castle. And so that is the end, essentially, of the origin of Frank. Obviously, later on we get into his family dying. But this is truly important because this is where the Punisher manifested. So a lot of times people make the mistake of saying, Punisher, you know, he's not the Punisher until his family's killed and he has to go out and kill all the criminals because, you know, those are the kind of people that got his family killed. That's wrong. Punisher has always been around. It's always haunted Frank. And in that war and in that bloody moment, that is when he became the Punisher. His family later, we'll see, was just a catalyst but he had already been the Punisher and he already knew who he was. Anyways, let me know what you think about part one of Punisher Max. I'll be covering this entire volume, moving on to more. I'm also gonna be covering the boys. What I want to do is cover stories that no one else on YouTube talks about. I just think they're very good stories that are oftentimes missed because a lot of other channels are just scared to cover such controversial or bloody or graphic stories, but they are amazing stories and I think they need to be covered. So I will be doing that on top of my regular versus battles and my regular power scaling and all that. Um, let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, and comment. If you are now interested in Punisher, let me know down below. Uh, like Skinny said, I guess people think he doesn't have memorable stories. I hope I'm changing people's minds. But uh, yeah, join my Discord if you want to talk to me, talk to other people. Um, it's been your boy Sir Splash, and I will see y'all later. Peace.